you can chat with me, chat away. There we go. Okay, um, let us start. Hi, Lissedi, it's nice to meet you. Um, welcome to our class. Um, I hope you enjoy it here with us. It's really nice to, to have you with me. Um, let us start. So we are, I hope you are all ready for a productive accounting session here right before um, our long weekend. Um, we got, I got some exciting news. We will still be continuing. I don't know if you guys are going to go back to school, um, but I do have exciting news that we will be continuing these sessions for you. So you can meet me every day at four, oh, at five, okay, at five. You can meet me at five. Um, so then we can continue getting through this accounting session. Um, Lissedi, for you that have just joined us, you are so very welcome. Um, my name is Shante. I, I will be your grade 12 accounting teacher or tutor for the session. Um, I am an accounting teacher currently at a school um, where I teach grade 12s, grade 11s and 10s, as well as a bit of EMS, trying to lay that grade 9 accounting foundation for grade 10. Um, I have an absolute passion for our for our subject and I really want to prepare you to be the best well-rounded accounting student um, you possibly can be at the end of the year because that's our aim. So um, I don't know what your future prospects are in terms of what you want to do in your future but I am here to provide you um, with a good foundation. So whether it is to do well or just pass or to get a distinction, um, or maybe you guys wanna actually go into the accounting field, it would be great to have you um, serve us and help us um, in this accounting field. So Vicky is back. Hi Vicky, it's nice to see you. And Pooms, it's nice to see you again as well. Um, smiling big to know you guys are here. It's nice to do, for you to join. Um, I've just introduced um, myself to Lissedi. She's new, joining us now. So um, it's nice to see you, Vicky. I hope you had a good um, dinner last night. We missed you when you left us. Um, so today we are tackling ethics and internal control. I'm very glad, Vicky. And so we're just going to finish our ethics. We spoke about ethics yesterday, if you could remember. Um, hi, Lissedi. Uh, okay. Um, so now we're going to have a, um, a do internal controls as well. And then that's going to be it. So um, Vicky and Pooms, those of you who just joined, we have good news. We are going to um, still be seeing each other every day from five. Um, sorry, Lissedi, if I, if I presumed you, you weren't a boy, I'm sorry for that. Um, but now we are going to presume with our classes. So you will meet me um, here every day at five and then we will continue with our classes. Last little bit of information. Um, you can get all my um, notes on um, www.africateengeeks.co.za. So this weekend I will upload um, all these documents. Um, I will send it to the admin um, staff and they will upload it. If this doesn't get uploaded, I know, I think Tendor yesterday gave me um, her email address. So what I'll do is if by, by let's say Monday, let's give it 
time till Monday. If it's not uploaded yet at five, I will take down our email addresses and then we can just distribute the work from there. Okay, so you can um, get all the information you need from www.africateamgeeks.ca.za um, and then also you can follow us on social media. Okay, let me start our session. Jadida, hi, it's nice to see you. I see you here as well. Welcome, Lucidi. He's new to our class today. Okay, so just a background. We spoke about ethics and then we stopped at what would you do? We stopped at um, these far, three steps three steps in um, an ethical problem to solve an ethical problem. So what I say, just to quickly recap, we talked about what would you guys pull the trigger? Will you not be pulling the trigger? Okay, and then now we're going to say, okay, most of you decided to, it depends, we talked about, okay, ma'am, it depends on who the one person is versus the five people. And then I say to you, I'm going to um, discuss in a question paper, I'm going to discuss a situation with you and I'm going to say, listen here, you are one of the board of directors and um, you are faced with a certain ethical problem. Um, and now let's take, for instance, let's take, because then we stopped and talked about this coronavirus. So I am thinking you will most definitely get something um, of the coronavirus in most probably every paper you're going to write at the end of the year. Okay, but let's say, let's take this ethical problem of, are we going to open the economy again? Are we gonna open businesses? because our economy is suffering and people are suffering financially um, or are we going to keep businesses closed at the expense obviously of finances so that people can actually live and that because of the safety of people so what is better to save more people or to save more money or to make more money, okay? So this is an ethical problem. So now I say, okay, you are um, a board of director of a non-essential company. And now this level four and level three is introduced to you. What would you do? Which skeleton staff would you start getting back to the, um, to work because I mean, obviously everyone's important. So now how do you handle the situation? So now you're going to answer your question and you'll never get a question in grade 12 where it says, name the three steps to solve an ethical problem. You'll never get that. But what I would do is, like I said, I will explain this Corona issue and you have to then say, as a director, um, we would sit in a board meeting and we would discuss how did this situation arise. We will ask the following questions and then you're going to list. I will ask how did the situation arise? Obviously, if it's a global thing, you don't ask that because everyone will know that. What must we decide? Okay, so then you should say the decision we should be making is to say, okay, are we going to compromise people's health or are we going to compromise um, financial stability or the, maybe the going concern of the business? Um, who can take who can take this decision? Who can make it? Can you make it? Can someone else make it? What would the implication be? Would, what would it be? So are we going to allow people back and then put their health in danger or are we going to close down our um, business for a while longer but suffer financially and maybe never open up our, our doors again? Okay. What a written constructions must instructions must be consulted. So, for instance, there is that whole um, uh, communication sent to us by the parliament, by the president, to say, okay, listen here, um, only th one third of the staff can go back to work. Okay, so uh, is there any of those I sh it should, that I should consult? Okay, yes, there is. Great. Okay, does um, existing procedures or policies throw light upon the situation? Maybe currently in your business you have a policy that says, um, you know, up until a certain percentage, 
I know my father's company actually says if they don't meet a certain percent of targeted sales for the company, he works in an aviation company, they are going to lose 40% of their salaries. So in April, he got a 40% reduction of his salary because the whole business didn't meet a certain mark. Okay, so how are we going to... Um, work analyze the situation they had a procedure in place so they're going to follow it okay who must be consulted so i should maybe consult some health um organizations some um, general practice practitioners um medical staff to make sure everything is put in place safety procedures and put in place okay and would what is the ethical alternative um for each decision, okay? The facts and assumptions must be carefully evaluated. Should any of these choices require that an ethical principle shall be the victim? Is there any leeway for a compromise that will not violate the organization's standards of integrity? Now, yesterday I said to you, what's important and what keywords I'm, I'm looking for in ethical questions is, acting morally honestly and correctly if you do act ethically you will act morally honestly and correctly right so here i want us to also make sure that we um use the word integrity because integrity is linked to what you do when no one is watching doing what is right when no one is watching okay and then finally would another employee agree with your ethical verdict so what's really important in an ethical question is that you would ask yourself a third person a third person from looking from the outside in and person who's totally objective, would they also um, find your, your decision or what you have decided upon as rational and as correct? Okay, so that's what um, you should always think of. If you Are you proud to tell your family, listen here, um, this is the situation, this is what I did? Would they also have done the same? Okay, then my second step, we said, think about the possible outcomes, right? We spoke about that. We spoke about ask the following questions. So that's what we said, just to um, quickly revise on that. Now, the following um, principles are extremely important, okay? And especially in an ethics question and especially around accounting, I want you to make sure you write down these words. When you go and actually study um, accounting and you have the subject auditing, we have a personal code of, a professional code of conduct um, where you, ha you have a whole standard in your um, ISAS that says, listen here, you have to be able to um, act with integrity, objectivity, personal confidence, competence and proper care, confidentiality and professional behavior. Also, when you guys are um, on your way to become CAs, then you are going to be, a, a art, you're going to be a articling, okay? And then what you do is you have to fill in a TSR and a PSR. So what that is, it's just a performance um, form to tell Psyker how you are doing, how you are performing during the three years to get all your certain competencies. And then in your TSR, um, I think it's the TSR, because the PSR you have to do every second month and then there has to be a TSR for every PSR. But anyway, it's just um, knowledge, general knowledge that you um, have to tell Psyker okay, how, in what scenarios, what situations did I act with integrity? In what situation was I placed in and I acted with um, objectivity? Where did I perform my duties with professional competence and proper care? Was I put into a situation where um, confidentiality could have been an issue, but it's not? Was I um, conducting myself in a professional manner? Okay, so these are all important. Okay, so maybe take a photo, but if you have your books with you and it is in your books, I'm pretty sure it will be, that is perfectly fine. But let's have a look at integrity. It says, 
integrity can be described as the quality of a person uh, a person possesses to be honest and to demonstrate strong moral values a person of integrity will always strive to carry out their tasks um, assigned to him to the best of his ability he will set high standards and be determined never to lower those standards i think what's also very important here um, to take into account your moral values is dependent on your culture, your belief system, um, where you come from in your in your culture, in your um, when you grew up, how you grew up, what you were taught as being right, and what was being what is being taught as being wrong. Okay, so all of those things are important. Okay, so what could be correct for me might not be in line or correct to you okay that's important so objectivity um objectivity is the ability to act impartially honestly and without any prejudice a person who is objective will make decisions that are based on facts and will not allow personal feelings to influence his decision and recommendations he will always be ju just and unbiased in the execution of his duties and will not be influenced by others so what might compromise your um ability to act ethically is if you do not act objectively does that make sense what will compromise you not being able to um act with integrity if you do um you do not act with integrity let's look with personal professional competence and proper care professional competence and re refers to the ability to perform your duties well um through having the necessary technical skill capability, knowledge, and experience. Exercising proper care will ensure that tasks are carried out responsibly, carefully, and promptly. So can, do, are you actually qualified to do work of a CA? Are you actually qualified? Do you have the necessary knowledge um, to do this audit? Okay, all of those things are important. Confidentiality. Okay, this refers to the ability to keep confidential um, information affecting the organization that has been revealed to you as an employee um, in the execution of your duties. Um, this information may not be imparted to anyone outside the business unless it is required from you professionally or by law. What this just means is maybe you are auditing, you are in a situation where you are auditing Coca-Cola. Okay, we are auditing Coca-Cola and you, you know your brother or your best friend just bought 10,000 rands worth of shares in Coca-Cola. Okay, and suddenly when you order in Coca-Cola, you can see this, this um, financial position is looking a bit rough. Okay, this is not a good financial position at the moment. They are making bad decisions. This is not a good investment. So he's, it was a bad decision to invest 10,000 Rand into shares in this company because the share price will drop. He will lose some money, all those things. You cannot sit over a dinner table and discuss these things. And you can't say, you know, you need to sell your shares as quickly as possible. That's not allowed. Okay. Unfortunately, you have to keep client information very uh, confidential okay professional behavior personal behavior refers to the manner in which a person behaves in the workplace no employee should ever in any way act in a manner that would have a negative impact on the reputation of his profession or on that of his employer a professional will at all times act in thoughtful courteous friendly and polite manner so um psycho also has Urba also has um a certain code of conduct so are you acting in that manner how are you dressing is it are you dressing professionally are you talking to clients professionally okay a disciplinary policy you just need to know what it is it's basically just um um a a policy drawn up to tell um, the workers that if you work in a certain way, then um, then um, you then you okay. So if you work in a certain way, um, 
do certain stuff. It's against um, our policy and therefore a disciplinary action will be taken. Okay, so what is our rules and regulations? Okay, according to our workplace. Then there's some principles. You can quickly screenshot this or take a photo. Um, they might ask you something like draw up a, dis a disciplinary policy and then you should know that it should be based on these things. Okay, but it's highly unlikely that um, I have too many things to test. So I don't think it's too important. You can however quickly stop and take a photo or take a screenshot. Okay. Now, I think um, when we talk about something like HIV, um, that's also important because it's very relevant to our um, country in South Africa today. We have a lot of protests and strikes. Um, and how does the business, um, what does the business policy say? I know you get um, unauthorized um, protests and actions. So can you then um, dismiss your workers? If it's a organized um, one by some unions, then what's your policy on that? So all of these things are important, um, but I'm not going to go through that. I think you've heard enough of that um, in your other subjects. Now, all you need to know about professional bodies is um, you should know why professional bodies are put there. Okay, why are they there? They are just there to make sure that a standard must be maintained and certain requirements must be satisfied in order to work within a particular profession. So like I mentioned now, to be, in order to become a CA, psyche has a few... Um, a few requirements um, in the sense of you have to have your become accounting agree then you have to get your CTA which is your honest in honors in accounting then afterwards you have to do three three years of um, of articles in which you need to work that's why articles is three years long just interesting fact because you have to work I think it's 30,000 core hours but there's a certain amount of core hours and if you divide it over a, um, the three years that's why it's it's three years so um, you have to within three years you have to meet the following requirements you have to work a certain amount of core hours you have to be able to do certain competencies be able to do an IFRA statement an IFRA for SME statement um, you have to be able to audit certain subjects conduct a um, a meeting manage your manage your juniors so all of those things are put into place to make sure that when you are a CASA you are the best CASA that um, Psyca could possibly deliver, okay, and that when they do um, let you in on the CASA, that you keep and uphold the institution to the highest standard. So that's all you need to know is why professional bodies are put in place. And then I think it's important to know in our accounting profession, we have SIPA, okay, that's professional accountants. So they don't do the auditing. They don't do auditing at all. They just do um, the accounting side of things. They do financial statements. Um, they check everything in regards to um, your bookkeeping and your accounting side of things. SICA is a South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. So um, you have, um, you become a CASA. So here you would be a PASA. Here you would be a CASA. And if you are PASA, you would um, then be um, registered at the at SIPA if you are a CASA or you have a new thing called AGASA. So um, SICA introduced a new um, accreditation called, I think it's um, Accredited General Accountant. So then 
at the end of your name, you can just write AGASA to say that you are a member of SICA. That's always a good thing. People take you seriously. Um, and all you have to do is you have to get your degree and then your three years articles. So you also need to be competent in that. Then we have the CIAA, okay, that's the Chartered Institute of Administrative Accountants. And I have the IIA, Institute of Internal Auditors. I also have the CACA, which is a Chartered Association of Chartered Accountants. So all I think that it's important to just know um, these bodies, I don't think I'll, they'll ever ask you to list um, professional bodies, but they might ask you what does SIPA stand for, or what does CACA stand for, and then you will need to be able to just list them. Okay. So that concludes our ethics. Okay, I think it's very important, especially in the time we are living in, they are putting a lot of emphasis um, on our ethics. Okay, now we're going to move over to internal controls and internal auditing. This is also a question you will be getting. I think internal controls is something you will most definitely get. So if you remember, I gave you some internal controls in regards to um, the acquisition and the disposal and the security of fixed assets. And then I also gave you some um, inventory internal controls. So I need you to be able to identify what type of control is it. Um, be able to know what an internal control is is for instance okay so now the rest of the session we'll be spending on what is the internal control and what does the internal audit function do and then next week we will start with <laughs> with recons okay so if you're not a fan of recons um, i will be doing recons with you so we've done fixed assets we've done inventory we've done internal auditing and ethics so then for this term, we will focus on um, internal control. Oh, um, we will focus on recons and we will focus on VAT. Okay, so those are the two things we will focus on um, the rest of the, or the next few sessions. So let's start. Let's see what is internal controls. Okay, these are daily controls and management in respect of the application of predetermined control measures. There is therefore continuous assurance that these fixed control measures are and processes are being conformed to so that appointed goals can be achieved. So what does this mean? It just basically means that, um, it just basically means that controls are put into place to meets a certain objective. So let's take for instance, if I make sure that my safe is locked, okay, that control is put into place to make sure that my assets doesn't get stolen, okay. Then let's see um, if I have a fixed asset register, why would I have that? Why would I make sure that my fixed asset register is only um, accessible to one or two people of management to make sure that no one can make unauthorized changes. No one can just add or take away um, any assets on the fixed asset register. Safeguarding, segregation of duty. So in inventory, I asked my students and um, they had an assignment now where I gave them a certain process and I said to them, is this, do they have um, sufficient internal controls? And they had to say, yes, they do, ma'am. Why? Because I have a person who orders the goods. Then I have a person who... Um, receives the goods, then I have another person who records the goods. Can you see that there's a segregation of duties? Segregation of duties is a great internal control because not one, not just one person actually makes um, the order, receives it and records it. Can you see if this one person did all three of these functions, it's very easy for them to take um, stuff for themselves and to just, um, give a fraudulent 
recording of the inventory. Okay, so it's very easy if you are the person that does all the functions. So for instance, um, at school, we have an internal process, where, an internal control put in place, where if I want stationary as a teacher, I have to go to a certain lady and I have to say, um, ma'am, I need um, a cokey and a pen. And she says, okay, love, that's fine. Then she goes and opens the stock room and she takes, she takes it out. And then, um, let's just see, I have a chat here. Um, she goes and takes it out. Then I have to, as a teacher, I have a nay, I have a little bookie, and I am um, then therefore write Chante took a pen and a paper or a pen and a cookie, we said. Okay, then I sign and then that we take it out. That is to control my um bye Vicky. Okay. So we have um some then, so that's a control we have in place to make sure not, no one just takes um, the stationary they like and then there's a control over stationary. Okay, so four types of controls you need to be able to identify. Is this control a preventive control? Is it a tracking control? Is it co a corrective control or a directive control? Okay, what is a preventive control? It's something that puts uh, it's a control put into place to make sure that the work is done um, beforehand. So, okay, so here it is the standards before the work is done so that the control can be correctly implemented right from the start. Okay, like for instance, here they give burglar proofing of windows. Okay, so it's a preventative control. This control put into place for stationary is a preventative control to say no one can just take stationary. There is actually a control of the um, the the distributing of stationary tracking control. Just think of something like tracker in your car. Find my friends on iPhone or find my iPhone. That is a tracking control. So it's a mechanism put into place to track down problems that have a um, have arise. So alarms that goes off. Another one could be a management report. So um, businesses they draw monthly management reports on their financial position. So what was my income for this month? What was my expenses for this month? Um, how can I maybe improve it next year? Where is Where am I losing money? Um, how What is my financial position currently? And how can I then, um, so they are con um, regulating their financial position. So that's also a tracking control. We have corrective controls, a control mechanism that is in place, which assists in handling of the problem. Okay, so the alarm is linked to a reaction unit. Okay, so corrective one is, so now the problem happened. How am I going to respond to it? Okay, so what would my response control be? Okay, this is after the problem or the risk has um, risen and then what would your what control would you now put in place so in future this will not happen again okay directive control and me mechanism is in place to prevent undesirable events from happening okay so that a sign stating that this property is protected by the alarm system okay so um, that slip that um, continue but it's wet you know that little um sign at the malls those are directive controls to tell people to inform them um of this happening this event happening okay internal controls it is designed and implemented to ensure that the goal of the organization is achieved these goals among others are to what to assure that my financial information is accurate and reliable so let's go back to my inventory um example so we had a um we had a control put into place that there are enough segregation of duties so my person a orders the 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 trading stock person b collects the trading stock and person c is the one who records the trading stock right so if we have a look there then we can see 
that um, they, the reason why it's put into place is not only to reduce theft, it's also to make sure that the actual amount of trading stock being recorded in my financial statements are accurate and reliable. So when shareholders have a look at these um, these figures, they can rely on, on the inventory figure, they can rely on the fixed asset um, figure that is stated in the financial statements. Okay, to ensure that employers adhere to policy guidelines and rules, there are so certain rules, there's some, um, I know at mines, when a lot of my friends go and audit mines, they have to blow every single day to make sure that they didn't drink anything 24 hours before, um, before they came to work, because it's such a um, important, workplace that you can't be drunk um, because any small minor mistake can lead to a loss of many lives okay to ensure that all employees respect and honor the norm and values of the organization okay to protect the assets of the organization so my example of the staff of, of the safe that you put your money in the safe that is to protect your assets to lock away um to lock your storeroom. That's a way of protecting your assets to ensure that resources of the business are economically and effectively utilized. For instance, the stationery, it is effectively utilized. I'm not just taking pens because I lost it. I'm actually taking pens because I um, mine isn't working or um, it has dried up. Okay, internal accounting methods of checks and controls form part of the total internal control system of the business. These measures are not only installed to ensure that bookkeeping is done correctly, but it's also to make sure that the, to protect the business against fraud and other white collar crimes. Now, I had a question in my other lesson that asked me, ma'am, what is a white collar crime? Now, let's quickly see who can tell me. Hi, Luke, it's nice to see you. Luke Pums, who can tell me? Um, Asim Harle, can you guys tell me what is a white collar crime? Can you tell me what's a white collar crime? Let's see. Quickly use the chat box so we can see if you can tell me. Let's see if you can tell me, what do you think is a white collar crime? You can also just say not sure, then I can answer your question. Okay. You are too quiet, not sure. Okay, thank you for the response, Luke. I appreciate it. Let me tell you. So the thing about white collar and blue collar, it comes from um, bl blue collars talking about the workforce. It refers to, and it comes from, or it stems from overalls. So your blue overall, it comes from that. So that's why it's called blue collar crimes. So it's referring to, um, less sophisticated crimes, so stuff like theft um, and stealing, yeah, stealing from the company, less sophisticated crimes. White collars refer to the white collar of a button down shirt. Okay, so it's referred to um, more sophisticated crimes, things that um, you don't physically kill someone, but you do, um, you do, you act fraudulently, you do money laundry, laundering, you are, um, 
increasing your assets when you don't actually have the um, assets. You are inflating your sales to show a bigger figure than what actually happens. You are making out in um, fake invoices, and then you are so you then you account for it as income, but it's not actually happening. So can you see it's more sophisticated? It's fraudulent. It has to do with management. Okay, so that's why they refer to white collar. Just think of the your white collar of your button down shirt. So that refers to people in management positions and then blue collar crimes would be um, actual people doing normal crimes we all know of where think of Steinhoff um, that was a big white collar crime all these scandals coming out from KPMG Deloitte's um, of Hewlett's and the Guptas, that, that's all white collar crimes. Okay, so goals of internal accounting is to do what? To ensure that all income that is earned is actually received and that is correctly recorded, that all the expenses are authorized and correctly recorded, um, all assets are protected properly, um, my accounting records are 100% correct and reliable. So just something for interest sake, so when I am an external auditor, in order to determine my audit procedures, I go and have a look at what is the, um, how effective is this internal controls of the business? Is there segregation of duties when with trading stock? So if there isn't, I'm gonna do more auditing procedures to make sure that that figure is actually reliable and correct. If they have a strong internal control of uh, controls with inventory. I'm not going to do as much testing because I know there's enough controls put into place. So internal controls systems are very important for external auditor to make sure what can I rely on and what can't I rely on. Okay. Um, what does the internal auditing function do so this is very important and i think this is also very important to take note of an internal auditing um, is done to check whether the control measures con uh, conform to specific requirements and standards and whether it's applied correctly it's therefore um it's therefore comments on the manner in which measures are applied and recommends possible improvements so for instance let's say this lady at my school is she just gives me the keys as a teacher and she says, okay, love, you can go and grab your own stationery. Does she apply the control correctly? No, she doesn't. Okay. She does not, um, she does not apply it. So then I, as an internal auditor, will one day just go and check how is this procedure um, being done and then I will recommend um, and go to this lady and say listen ma'am you need to go and physically do it yourselves in order for um, to, con to control who takes what you have to make sure that everyone writes down what they take you need to write it down to check that they only take what they really took okay and write down everything okay so um we are going to stop here i'm going to do this next week monday i'm quickly going to chat about the pre-audit investigation and then i'll talk about the different audit reports yeah it's very important what opinion you um give in your audit re report and what it means. So I'll quickly take 10 minutes of the next lesson before I start with recons to quickly chat to you about that. But I just really want to tell you something interesting that um, an internal control was not um, actually put into place. So every payment usually needs to be authorized by, it depends on the, how big the, uh, the business is, but um, I had a friend whose dad had a big construction company um, and he had a lady, a bookkeeper, who worked for him for over 20 years. So obviously he relied on her. She's, she, stay, she worked for the company for 20 years. They had a good relationship. Um, and suddenly, and they did quite well for themselves, it was a small business, so he would authorize all the payments. So every time a supplier is paid, he would, he would, um, he, he, um, he would just sign 
every time when a supplier or expense needs to be paid over a certain amount, he needs to authorize it. Okay, I'm going to finish in two minutes. He needs to authorize this payments. So what she did is she, then they, the company did very well and suddenly the company started to do really poorly and they couldn't understand why. Every time this lady comes and she gives him um, the authorization, the payments to, for him to authorize and he would just, he won't look at the pay, um, supplies he would pay, he would just physically sign and then she would make the payments. Okay, so she did everything by the book. He authorized it. He didn't have a look on who he's paying every single month. Um, and then he went away for, he went overseas for two weeks and then he asked his brother-in-law or to just take over for the, the two weeks to make sure everything is done properly. And she continued with her um, fraudulent activity. So what she did is she went to him, the brother-in-law now to authorize all the payments. And this brother-in-law picked up for the first time, he picked up that we are paying X, Y, Z suppliers continuously. Why? So he then investigated and he saw that she actually changed um, the XYZ. She had two XYZ suppliers and the one she changed to her own banking details. So the um, owner of the business relied and trusted her to act honestly. So he didn't look how many times he's paying XYZ suppliers. So he just signed off. So every time she paid some money into her own bank account. And so she stole millions. And when he went away, then um, this brother-in-law picked it up okay and then she obviously got dismissed so what i just want you to see is some internal controls are put in place and therefore they make sure that the lady doesn't steal or whatever so see why it's so so important to make sure that these controls are put in place correctly and actually are applied by management and by the workforce okay so we will continue with our session Next week at five, um, we'll quickly have a look at these audit investigations, your audit opinions, and then we'll tackle some recons. Okay, so I hope you have a good long weekend. I hope you rest, and then I'll definitely see you next week. Okay, pleasure, Luke. Bye, everyone.